and good morning to you. For this is the day that my awesome God has made. And we just want to rejoice and be glad in it. I heard somebody say, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. If God has been good to you, you don't have a problem with giving him praise. You don't have a problem saying thank you. You don't have a problem saying hallelujah because the God that we serve is an able God and we thank him for keeping us. Thank him for covering us. In the time of this pandemic, God has kept us for a purpose. And our purpose, the only thing that we can give God that doesn't already belong to him is the praise, our individual praise. And we have come as the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church in our morning worship just to give God glory, give him honor, and to give him all the praise that he is due. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the God that we serve, he is truly worthy to be praised. Let us pray. Father God, we come now, as always, thanking you for being God and your God all by yourself, realizing you're a jealous God, but realizing that you are a mighty God, that you can do anything but fail. A few of your handmade servants, we have gathered here at the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, Lord, over in Norwood, just to say to you, thank you. Thank you for being who you are for every blessing. And Lord, sometimes you have to allow us to go through some burden and really appreciate your blessing. But we say thank you. Now, God, we ask that you bless those under the sound of my voice, those, the few here in the sanctuary, those listening live on Facebook, those on YouTube, and of course, I never want to forget my fabulous phone ministry. We thank you in advance for what you're about to do for us today. We just ask that you keep your hand of protection on each and every member of this church and churches all over this land and country that open their doors and believe that Jesus died for our sins. And realizing that he rose, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Now, God, we just ask that you stamp it with your signature and your signature is by way of sending your Holy Ghost. And we will be careful to praise you to honor you, and to glorify you. We ask these blessings in the name of your son, Jesus. He is our risen, reigning, and returning Lord. We pray for his sake. Amen. Elder, Maestro Elder, T. Dion Cobwell.
Father God, we come now asking as always that you will allow Tyus to sit down. Use me as an instrument of thy peace. Where there's darkness, Lord, I need your words of light. Sadness, your words of joy. And master, if there be any hatred, I need your words of love. Come now. Please, master, walk with us. Talk with us. Carry us now to the third heaven. And Lord, before our feet touch valley's ground, we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We ask these and continuous blessings in the name of your son, Jesus, and for his sake. Amen. amen. Say amen again. Say amen like you know him. Oh, yeah. That means that Jesus can fit wherever you need him. See, one of the problems is people haven't tried it for themselves. 
We are thankful for another day. Another day of God's loving kindness and his tender mercies. He saw forth, saw fit to bring us forth to a another first Sunday. And you know, some folk have the audacity to think that they have been so good and so right that he had to bring them to the day. But I'm, I'm mindful, I'm aware that it's by his grace and his mercy. Journey with me, if you will, to that Old Testament book that nobody really likes to read. <laughs> to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter number 17. These are the words of God speaking to his servant Moses. Leviticus 17 and verse number 11. These words are there in the King James. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that make an atonement for the soul. Grass withers, our slave fades, but the word of God will stand forever. I want to use as a subject with the help of the Holy Spirit, just stay with me this morning. I want to talk about nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood story is told, a preacher tells a story of a time that he had to go and have surgery. Now, it wasn't me, y'all, but I did have to go and have one, but he went to the hospital for what's supposed to have been a simple procedure. And I tell people all the time, anytime they got to give you any type of anesthesia, it is not simple. There's no such thing as minor surgery. He, he went for a simple procedure that ultimately turned out to be a nightmare for him. Uh, uh, it would eventually take him four weeks to partially recover because of the dura. That's a part of your spine, layers in your spine. The dura in his spine had been punctured. This, he said it caused him to develop what is known as, we call them migraines, but he was having a spinal migraine. It, it, it would take him four days of fighting a migraine to, to finally recover. It was, it, it was given what is called a blood patch. When I, read, when I saw this story, I had to do my own research because some of this stuff I ain't know what it was myself. They gave him uh, 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 what uh, injection, if you will, of himself. I'll explain that in a minute. He had, he had what was called a, a, a blood patch as the dura was accidentally pierced by a, a needle during a spinal amnesia. Uh, anesthesia, excuse me. Endura is a name. It comes after the dura matter a protective shield or sheath that forms the outermost layer of a spinal cord and protects the central nervous system. He said he had a spinal migraine. And, and to fix the problem, it was recommended that he go through a process uh, of this blood patch, cause it, uh, I, I got brother, 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 brother he, he, he can help me with this. Otto Lugos blood is necessary. And that word, big word, all, of, all it means is that he's going to use his own blood, which sounds interesting. It is drawn from a main artery and then injected into an epidural space, which is the space around the dura. Your own blood is able to find the spinal leak and immediately seal it up. 
He said it worked for him. And the migraine was immediately gone. Although he had um, concern about it, it never returned. We fully understand what blood, without blood, in our bodies, there is no life. Thought I'd get at least two amens right there. However, the blood flowing through our veins does so much more than we actually realize. And if you think about it, if our blood can heal our own bodies, if you can take your own blood to fix some of your bodily ailments, how much more can the blood of Jesus do for us? Can I tell you, the Bible rings true concerning the blood. Blood flows through the Bible just as it does through our veins. The blood of Christ keeps Christians alive. Someone has said, if you cut the Bible anywhere, it'll bleed. Somebody get that on the way home. Blood is spoken about in the Bible 427 times. It's easy to see that the blood is not a minor theme in the Bible. Without the blood, the gospel is dead. And we are deprived of having eternal life. Jesus said, for this is my, we're we going to hear it again today. He said, this is my bl the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Paul added to that and said, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. He also explains we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of our sins. Then Peter steps in. Peter said, we are not redeemed with silver and gold and precious stone, but with the precious blood of Christ. Can't leave John out. John agreed and co-signed with Peter. He said, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. The early church understood the power of of the blood. And you know, if you tell somebody today that you're going to stay under the blood, some people will look at you weird. Something wrong with it. I, I, I'm washed in the blood. I got the blood of Jesus on me. Except they be a believer and understand the power of the blood, they're going to look at you like you don't lost your mind. There are about 22 sermons in the, in the book of Acts. And they all give the same message, more or less. Death, burial, resurrection. They understood in, in that day that his death and the provision of the covering by the blood was the essential ingredient for the gospel. Somebody asked me the question, what is the gospel? Simply put, the gospel, yes, it is the good news. Biblically, the, the gospel is the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I stopped by to tell you, my brothers and sisters, if you're wondering about anything concerning a believer, it's nothing but the blood. It's nothing but the blood. Some of you know some, some things uh, 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 about the blood, and some of you, some people just can't handle seeing blood. Are y'all with me? I, I mean, I, I have had to develop a stomach for it myself because you have to visit people sometimes and they have IV in their arm. And, and when you look at the holes, the, the tubes of the IV, sometimes blood is in, in that tube. Some, and and, and, and y'all praying with me today? Um, some people, it's hard for them to see blood. When they look at blood, I, I've seen people uh, pass out. As a matter of fact, on the job, we had a man to get injured, and he was bleeding profusely. Another went over to try to help him, and when he saw how much blood was being poured out of his body, he had a heart attack. You see, blood is internal. To make it external, it means some, something got to hurt. Something got to hurt somewhere. And, and 
Even for those folk, they got so many new things now. But when you have to prick your finger <laughs> to get that blood, they may act like it don't hurt, but prick your finger. <laughs> and sometimes you, you, you don't want to really see blood. But for the believer, it's nothing but the blood. The Bible paints a broad stroke of blood on the canvas, and then in a, 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 it gives us a minute detail of what the blood of Jesus is all about. It breaks it down, if you will, into a cellular, a cellular level. It's important for our human bodies, and it's important for our spiritual bodies. Let me tell you, what I've learned and what I've learned through researching this story about this dura piercing. Arteries, my brothers and sisters, I know, know y'all already know this, but arteries are blood vessels that they, they carry, carry blood from the heart to the entire body. Am I right about that? Yeah. Therefore, it's, consider, it's considered clean, but the veins of blood vessels that it, they, they, they transport the blood from the body to the heart. Am I right about that? Once the blood leaves your arteries and circulate through your body, through your veins, it's no longer as clean as it was originally. The blood circulates through your veins to pick up all of the bad stuff. I, I, I understand that there are some, some white blood cells that will attack Anything in the blood that should not be there. Am I, am I on the right road? He, he, he checking me out, y'all. Just, just, just give me one of these if I get off. <laughs> but it, it attacks anything. And that's the reason when, when you go to the doctor, I used to wonder why in the world they always want to take my blood when I, wanna, when I go to the doctor. They take your blood to see if there's anything in there that shouldn't be. My brothers and my sisters, when they take that blood, sometimes they, they, they're trying to measure the fat, the cholesterol, any viruses or various diseases that we may be carrying and don't even know it. We be, may be asymptomatic of some things that we really didn't recognize in our own lives. But the blood of Jesus. Is it all right if I give you a few things about the blood of Jesus and I'm going to be out of your hair? Well, first of all, number one, the blood of Christ is perfect. It's perfect. It's a perfect blood. There are no impurities in the blood of the Lamb. For the virgin birth of Christ established his righteousness. God didn't even want man to have anything to do with it. Anything to do with it. In other words, the blood of Christ is a perfect blood. Y'all remember what Judas said when he had had messed up, he says, I betrayed innocent blood. Paul explained, for he, talking about God, had made him, talking about Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. O Pilate said, I can't find no fault in this man. Are y'all here? You know, some years ago, y'all may remember they had a Da Vinci Code, and I looked at a movie the other night uh, talking about the last uh, 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 temptation of Christ, and, and, and Da Vinci Code said that Jesus and Mary Magdalene had children. Oh, y'all read about it. They found a grave where it was marked by the name Jesus, a man and a woman and a baby. The remains. Well, Jesus was a common name of the day. Jesus was perfect. John, that in him is no sin. Yes, the blood of Jesus is perfect. It, 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 my brothers and sisters, it had to be a perfect blood to be able to cleanse from sin. Yeah. Keep reading in the book of Leviticus or back up in the book of Leviticus. You will find out that when they came to make their blood offering, teach Tyus, I'm trying, Lord. When they came to make their blood offering, it could not have spot or blemish. Yeah, and, and, and when the, they brought it to the priest, 
I think that's, um, I, I think that's Sister Alexander back there. They brought it to the priest. He bring it to the altar, slit the throat, bleed the animal on the altar. We don't have to do that no more. And if I do that, Sister Alexander will run me and anybody else that bring them animals up in here. But we don't have to do that anymore because his blood is perfectly, it, 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 it's, 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 it's perfect for what God wanted it to be. It certainly was a new thing for a woman without a man to give birth to a child. You see, the Adamic nature is passed to us <clears throat> through the bloodline of man. We became sinners because of that, not because of Jesus. Jesus' blood was per is perfect. Secondly, going on, I'm not going to hold you long. Not only is the blood of Christ perfect, but the blood of Jesus is pure. Pure. One of the reasons, a lot of people don't know this, one of the reasons that we use pure grape juice at communion is because if you use wine as we know wine, are y'all here? It's not pure. It has gone through what is known as a fermentation. In other words, you have uh, uh, bacteria working in the juice. Have you ever been in one of them churches that on first Sunday you can smell the wine before you? <laughs> but we use pure grape juice because it is symbolic of the purity of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is pure. Uh, and, and when you're talking about fermentation, you're talking about a rotting process. Wine could never give, the wine as we know it, could never give a proper picture of the sinless blood of Christ. For all that is holy, Satan has his counterfeits, and communion is no exception. It's some people that make, help me, Lord, they make their wine for communion. Pure grape juice is a great symbol of the purity just as the bread, the bread that shouldn't have any leaven, it should be unleavened bread. Pure. Should be pure. Family members, and perhaps you got some who have uh, struggled with cancer. Many have gone through treatments called chelation. Am I right? I'm on that one. They have mispronounced it, but I can sure tell you what it means. It's, it, it's similar to dialysis, to where the blood is drained, put through a process, and put back in the, into the body of the patient. This is designed to prolong and to assure a life and hopefully a good quality of life. After the blood has been purged of germs, diseases, bad cells it is then able to work against the enemy cells that were at war in the body. The writer of Hebrews states it this way. If the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifers sprinkle the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God Purge your conscience from the dead works to the serving of the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, the blood is pure. When the poor blood of the Savior is applied to a sinner, it provides cleansing. And I want to help you. Some of us think that since we already saved, since we already been born again, been, been blood bought, been washed in the blood, that, 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 that's the end of the blood. Tide can't wash off sin. Clorox can't soak out sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The songwriter to him knowledge is he, he helps me. He said, what, what can wash 
away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I, I, I'm pressing on. I'm pressing. It was nothing but the blood. The blood of, of, of Jesus is, is, is perfect. The blood of Jesus is pure. The blood of Jesus is perpetual. We got loved ones that are in some of these cemeteries and places of the dead, and they advertise having perpetual care. But when you go out there, you, you may need to have your own weed. Your headstone may be turned over. There has been no care. And if they gave some care, it was so long ago that you don't know, they, they, they can't tell you when the last time it was. You see, the animals of the Old Testament were continued year after year. The blood of the bull, the goat, provided forgiveness and pardon temporarily only because it pointed to the sacrifice of Christ and his blood being shed for the covering of our sins. The hot right of Hebrews helps us again. Who needeth not daily as those high priests. You see, the priests were always going and making blood sacrifice to offer up a sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people for this he did once when he offered himself grandma said he done died one time and he ain't got to die no more the devil Christ set in motion a continuous cleansing for those who trust in him that's the thing that we have to understand. And, and, and don't exclude yourself because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But it tells me in the word that if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. What is he using to cleanse you, Pastor Tyus? Glad you asked. He's using nothing but the blood. We're given the gift of eternal life that he purchased with his own blood. Yeah, we, 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 we are supposed to give and, and, and to support ministries within the church. But salvation was paid for a long time ago. Thank God we are washed. And we are washed, my brothers and sisters, once and for all, but you will all as long as we have this atom and frame, we are going to get a stain of sin in our lives. The Bible speaks of an everlasting covenant, and the blood of Jesus is that covenant. Our faith in his blood is all it takes to settle it forever and ever. If you believe that Jesus died, bled and died on that cross, songwriter, the old Deacon, he said that old account was settled long ago. My brother, I'm, I'm, I'm almost finished. Nothing but the blood. The blood of Christ, the blood of Jesus is perfect. The blood of Jesus is pure. The blood of Jesus is perpetual. Watch this one. The blood of Jesus is power. Somebody said it'll never lose its power. Let me explain this, this part simple. I'm going to just kind of rush through this it, 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 to make sure we have a full understanding of this. That's another song. I mean, so, a lot of songs today, uh, when I was DJing, we would I would call them one-hit wonders because they don't last long. There are some songs that can explain things to us because they came straight from the scripture. Would you be free from the burden of sin? Then everybody else would say, 
there's power in the blood. Would you over evil a victory win? I hear y'all hear? Somebody would say that, that, that there's power in the blood. Then it'd get good. There's power? Power. Wonder working power. Where's that in the blood? What who it come from? Of the there's power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Wonder working power. It leads me back to one of the names. His name is Wonder. He can do what no other power can do. Nothing but the blood. I'm on. Get out of your way. The blood of Christ is perfect. The blood of Jesus Christ is pure. Am I right about that? The blood of Jesus is perpetual. The blood of Jesus is powerful. My brothers and my sisters, the blood of Jesus is permanent. Permanent. Not to bore you with the details, but after this man went through his surgery, uh, got his blood patch. He said that there was a lot of blood that had to be cleaned up. There was a good amount of blood that was on the wrist and on the hand as well. As he got some on the shorts that he was wearing. He said when he got home, his wife used a cleansing solution to remove the blood stain. And you know, I've often wondered how doctors after dealing with all of this stuff that they deal with, especially in the emergency rooms and stuff like that, but whenever you saw them, they had on a solid white coat, no stain. I come to find out that they, I don't know if all of them use it, but they would use peroxide and boil it out and then laundry it. But there was a solution needed to keep and to get things clean. But I can tell you the blood of Jesus is a permanent blood. Jesus' blood cleanses us from our past sins. Isaiah says, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgression, and as a cloud thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. David says, as far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed our transgressions. He promised not to remember our sins no more. Jesus' blood covers our present sins, both our sins of omission and our sins of commission. We may be able to wash the blood from our clothes, but the blood of Jesus can never be washed off. I, I, I'm trying to move on and get on out of your way, but I got one more and I'm going to shut the door. It's perfect. It's pure. It's perpetual. It's powerful. It's permanent. Lastly, it's precious. We love to sing, oh, precious is the flow that make me white as snow. No other found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. Peter used that term, precious, to describe the blood of Christ. He said, but with the precious blood of Christ, as the lamb without blemish and without spot. I, I, I'm trying to hurry. If it's all right, I'm going to close with a story. Y'all have heard it. But that was a man, a wealthy man, who had an elaborate collection of paintings from Van Gogh and Monet and, and his only son shared his father's interest in rare paintings. They traveled around the world buying these paintings wherever they could find them. His son ended up enlisting in the army and was placed in the medical corps. 
and in, in a uh, severe battle while he was carrying a wounded soldier to safety, the son was seriously wounded himself. And the son died. The mother was dead already. And the news of the tragedy got back to the father and hurt him tremendously. He grieved for months. One day a knock came at his door and when he responded, he found a young man with a package. The young man explained that he was one of the several soldiers that his son had carried to safety. Knowing of his interest in painting, he had painted a picture of his son and he presented that picture to the father. Painting was not rare, but it was very precious to the father because it was a good resemblance of his son. The man moved a, a very valuable painting out of the way to put his son's painting up, the picture of his son. Hour after hour, he sat in a rocking chair and gazed up at his son's image. When death came, the art collection was put on sale, put up for auction. Hundreds of collectors came from all over the world to bid on these precious pieces of art. The auctioneer announced that they would start with the picture of the man's son. Mm. It was to be auctioned off first at the request of the father. A moan of disappointment could be heard as the people were waiting on the real expensive stuff. Let's get on with the real pain, one of the men said. The son's picture was held up and the auctioneer cried out, who will give me a hundred dollars? Who will give me $50? Who will give me $25? There was no response. But there was an old gentleman in the back, and he asked, will you take 10? The auctioneer said, sold. Folk in the crowd said, now we can get on with the real auction. Auctioneer said, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the auction. Crowd stunned and puzzled that this statement was given. The wheel declared that the son's picture was to be sold and the person who took it would get all of the rest. Somebody get that on their way home. The old man who paid $10 for the picture of the son was suddenly amazed at the fact he now owned all of the valuable painting. Can I tell you, as I sit down, when a person takes the son of God, everything God has is included. We could become heirs of God. And join as with Jesus Christ. The precious blood has made it all possible. So as I sit down, if you need to be saved, nothing but the blood of Jesus. If you need healing in your body, nothing but the blood of Jesus. If you need deliverance, from your sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. If you need your joy restored, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It was on Calvary's mountain that blood came 
streaming down. He was already bleeding because they had whipped him all night long. Some said it was 72. I don't know how many thorns, but they had put a crown of thorns on his head. Nailed his hands, nailed his feet, and he hung between earth and heaven. Hung from the sixth to the ninth hour, bleeding. And when they were not sure whether or not he was dead, a mean soldier came over and took his spear and plunged it into the side of Jesus. Scripture declares that blood and water came running down. But someone, there was a centurion that was standing there that when Jesus died, he said, this man must be the son of God. They took my Jesus down, put him in the tomb. I'm trying to stay, I'm trying to be good. They took him down laid him in that tomb. On that third day morning, he got up with power. And my brothers and my sisters, there may be some that don't believe now. But I had to research this before I make this, made this statement. I made it many times because I, the only man-made thing in heaven is the holes in Jesus' hands. He truly bled. Some said he swooned. No, no, Jesus died for your sins and mine. And I'm so glad. This may sound crazy, but I'm so glad that he bled for me. Not only did he bleed for me, he bled for you too. He bled so that we could be cleansed. And brothers and sisters, there's nothing but the blood of Jesus. You're wondering why you're able to hear me now. You're wondering why we're able to still go about. Pandemic is real. It has taken millions of people around the world. But his blood. We read in the New Testament that he told them, get a lamb. Kill it, the Old Testament. Take the blood. Paint your doorposts and your lintel. And the deaf angel will pass over. We're not here by accident. We have a purpose. It's not our goodness, but it's his grace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That blood is still saving souls. You can still get in under the blood. You can still be washed. We were in a hole in this church. Hole in this church says they slinging blood. God is still slinging blood. But the blood of Jesus is still covering anyone that confesses and believes that he died, was buried, and rose from the dead. And if you're listening, you just happen to run up on this little old fella talking about the blood. It still works. Doors of my father's house, he is the door. They're open. Doors of the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church are open. 
tickets. We talk about a lot of different things using um, different images. But all you have to do is believe that the blood came streaming down. Believe that he died. And you can be saved. Elder, if you will. Don't let it be said that you waited too late. Come while the blood is running warm in your veins. You may have earthly blood, but you need the blood of Jesus. God bless you.
would never lose its power. It's the same blood that saved my grandma and my great-grandma. And it's the same blood that saved me. get in place and making sure that everyone has been served choir members anyone that has not been served Ms. Alexander have you been served we thank God for the blood of Jesus without the blood we we would be still in our sins and on our way to hell said take eat for this is my body which is broken for you you may eat he took the cup and said this is the new testament in my blood we know that without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sin. He said, drink it all. He told his disciples, as often as you do this, you do show forth my death until I come. My brothers and my sisters know that he is alive and that he is coming back. Don't speculate. I tell you all the time about what took place. The scripture declares that he, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. They had been in the upper room to worship and now they had departed to work. And my brothers and my sisters, there's a lot of work to be done. We want to be mindful of third Sunday. Plans are being made. Churches will be prepared pray that all of you receive your packet with the information. My prayer is that you follow what you read. Follow what you read. Before I go there, let me go here. We're thankful to God for all of you in your stewardship. Continue to be good stewards. 
address is on the screen. You know where the church is. And if you know, I know you got your green envelope. Your green envelope is to replenish what we have used to uh, upgrade our church. And it takes that. I mean, yet yeah, we can keep praying and praying and praying, but if there's no money, a lot of things cannot be done. And if now, if you got more than 21 or 121, if you want to put a thousand in 21, would that be all right with you, Dr. Green? And he said, be right, be real fine. <laughs> we want to, but we want to encourage you to be, continue to be good stewards. And as far as our re-entering into the church, there are some guidelines that we have just got to meet. And I want to, if, if you haven't thought about this before we close, we are one of the few churches that have not, to my knowledge, buried anyone because of COVID. I know some folks saying, Pastor keeping us out of church, but you at home, you able to say, Pastor keeping us out of church. We are alive. We had planned, Pastor, Pastor wanted to come back men day, women day, all of that stuff, but it was just not the time. I checked last night, Jefferson County, six new cases, doing the numbers that I like. So be mindful when you come to church, don't be, don't, don't be unruly. Let's, let's stick to the guidelines of the CDC, stick to the guidelines. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for allowing us to come and worship. We, most of all, Lord, we thank you for the blood of your son that gives us all the ability to be saved. Now, God, we ask that you will bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Facebook, YouTube, phone ministry. Touch them in a special way. And Father, we ask that you never leave us alone. Lead us and guide us. Keep us in the hollow of your hand. And we'll forever give you the praise. We thank you in advance for the blessings of the week. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus. And for his sake, words of our Christ, go in peace. Love you. Nothing you can do about it.